I started working at Bell Labs in 1959 as a summer student. Later I got to work on some of the data from Walter Brown's experiment. I was holding my breath and uh, I heard everything went well and it was, it was terrific. I was in graduate school at that time, but that was really a striking thing. This was Telstar, the first communication satellite launched from Cape Canaveral into orbit, relaying TV and phone signals between the U.S. and Europe. It happened 50 years ago in July 1962, and dozens of scientists are back at Bell Labs in Murray Hill to mark the anniversary. I'm seeing all my old friends and people I didn't know. Physicist Walter Brown headed the radiation segment of the Telstar project. My role was to design an experiment that would measure the energetic particles that were present in space. He recalls the moment in Andover, Maine, when the satellite signal was first received. We're holding our breath, and when the thumbs went up, there was a whoop that went on through the, through the place. It works! <laughs> it was, yeah, wow. It was fabulous. Just 34 inches in diameter, the Telstar satellite included transistors, 3,600 solar cells, and a microwave amplifier. It was developed by 400 scientists and engineers. People were working like a dog. The time that the plan was laid until the time that the launch took place was less than three years. 62 winter and spring were wild. And what generated such intense collaboration? Physicist Louis Lanzarotti, now at NJIT, recalls the idea-rich culture of Bell Labs with spontaneous meetings in hallways and sharing ideas across disciplines. Having experts in all kinds of areas was just phenomenal and is just phenomenal. It was round lunch table discussions that we had that really fostered this interdisciplinarity and you just met everybody. Now owned by Alcatel-Lucent, Bell Laboratories continues the multi-science tradition that spawned innovation for decades starting in the 1920s. Improvements in sound motion pictures, radar and sonar during World War II, the transistor in 1947, laser and solar cells in the 50s, touch-tone phones in the 60s. Today, Todd Sizer is a leader in wireless access research. My PhD was in physics, I started in optics, and now I'm doing wireless. His goal is to replace a cell phone tower with a handheld device. That's what engineers love. They love an almost impossible problem to try to make a tower that was so small as to be almost invisible. Both Sizer and Lanzarotti believe that the Bell Labs legacy of innovation can now be observed statewide. In New Jersey, we have a wealth of talent, a wealth of universities and industry. Princeton, Rutgers, NJIT, Stevens, they're very strong, they're close together. I think the intellectual firepower is there in New Jersey. And the new frontiers? Communication efficiency and energy conservation. How much energy it takes to communicate. We believe that we're several orders of magnitude, a factor of a thousand more energy than we really need. Fifty years after the Telstar launch, research and innovation continue through projects that have, in Walter Brown's words, scope, inspiration, drive, and importance. At Bell Laboratories in Murray Hill, this is Susan Haig with New Jersey Arts News.